It is Mystery Box Monday, where I reach into my mystery basket of crafty supplies, pull out three items, and put them to use on one crafty project. And this time around, there's a little bit of a hiccup, so let's dive in. Hello everybody, welcome to Crafty Soup. My name is Misty. I play with paper and make projects that make my heart happy, so let's do another one. All right, here is my mystery box, and as I began to show you at the intro to this video, I do reach into my box and pull out three supplies, but you'll see in a moment that I'm actually going to pull out a fourth supply, which is a first for me in this series, which has been going on for over a year, um, and that's because this second item that I pull out is more of an organizational item than it is a craft item. Now, after I was all done with this and started editing this video, I thought, you know, I could have cut that up and used it as fabric, but I'd rather donate it off to somebody who can use it as a zipper pouch and not destroy its intended purpose. So I, I did also think about altering that up with my supplies, but I decided to go ahead and pull out a fourth item and do my typical um, three item challenge. And I will set that uh, bag aside as a donation. All right, so I've got lots of glitter going on this time around, and at first I was hoping that this little pot would be kind of a paste, but no, it is loose glitter, and loose glitter is definitely one of my pet peeves because it is very difficult to get cleaned up. And this is called a Sparkle Dust from Nuvo, and as you'll see a little bit later, it really is beautiful. I wish I didn't hate um, having leftover glitter everywhere because that is just a fact of glitter because it is so sparkly and beautiful, but I, I just have such a hard time using it. All right, the third item though is some chipboard pieces. Even though it said die cut on the package, these are chipboard and they're very steampunky, but they have a, um, a brighter color palette to a lot of the pieces than that kind of typically brown grungy look. So I'm gonna play with some of that color a little bit as we go. I will sort through these pieces and come back and uh, show you the ones that I will use as we start working on our project. All right, here is this kind of door frame that has a beautiful blue color. I did pick and pull a bunch of pieces that caught my attention in some way. Now the cat, I'm not gonna end up using, but this piece right here, it says, leave the road behind and take the trails or something along those lines. And that sparked a story idea for me. Before we get to that, I am going to play with these products a little bit just to kind of re-familiarize myself. I haven't used the Stickle brand in a long time as I've switched over to mostly Nuvo Drops. And here's some of the reasons why. If I try to smear it around, it just kind of sticks to whatever I'm spraying it with, including my finger. It doesn't make great domed like enamel dot styles like the Nuvo Drops do mostly. Um, and so I just didn't find that I really liked using stickles very much. Um, so I did feel like I needed some practice again. All right, here is the photo I'm going to talk about. And those plants that I pointed out are actually underwater. This, uh, quote unquote lake was so beautiful that you could see to the bottom of it in a lot of places. So I'm going to use that photo to tell this story and we'll talk about how this title ties in as we go. What I'm going to do with these glittery products is use them in small doses. Now I've got dark blue and I've got dark red, which could totally scream 4th of July kind of here in the United States. So I want to be careful to avoid that really patriotic look to a project that has nothing to do with... Um, you know, country and patriotism. So I need to use this stuff in pretty small doses. And while I like shimmer and shine, um, I just find it hard to find just the right places to put it. So I'm really focusing on just accenting some things, mostly the chipboard. As you'll see in a moment, I'm going to use some techniques directly on my photo with using some of these glittery products. But for now, I am using that stickles just to kind of touch a few little areas here and there on each of the chipboard pieces I think I will use. I did pull out all those clocks off on the side, and I don't think I'm going to use um, any stickles on those just because I'm not sure which one of them I may or may not use, so I don't want to color it up if I'm not going to use it. This piece actually was a great use for these stickles because that glass could be accented by colored glass in there. Um, and so I thought the stickles are pretty effective on that, but still small doses. <laughs> That's the name of the game here, small doses. 
All right, so I'm gonna set all of that stuff aside to dry and turn to my photo. I'm gonna use this quickie glue pin to adhere that glitter. It is a very, very fine glitter, so I think this quickie glue pin will be enough. However, it does that glue does dry very quickly, which is part of why it has that name. Um, as I was trying to open up this package here, I realized it had a sticker on it, so I had to remove that before I could get it open. And of course, the first thing it does is drop glitter everywhere, which is why I have coffee filters underneath me to try and contain a mess. And I did a good job until the very end, but we'll get to that as well. Going back to that quickie glue pin, it does dry very quickly. It's just like a rollerball ink pin. So you can get fine lines just like using an ink pin. And then you can adhere um, fine detailed stuff to this. It could be embossing powder. It could be, in this case, glitter. But look at how that glitter shines and sparkles. It is gorgeous. Um, again, I wish I liked using glitter because it is really pretty. And because I don't like using glitter, I don't know a lot of techniques for glitter. So I'm kind of making this up. When I first thought that I would tell the story with this photo, I thought, let's add a little bit of sparkle to the water to accent the photo. So I'm just making this up. Um, I drew little X's on there. I was trying to get little diamondy shapes, but the pen is a little bit too thick to get those teeny tiny diamondy shapes that could read as sparkles. So they ended up being X's. And you know, in the end, if I don't like this, I can just reprint another photo and plop it down over the top of this photo. And so that gives me the comfort to move on to this other idea, which is to draw an arrow onto the photo pointing out those plants. Now this ends up not being super effective because the dark blue glitter on top of this darker area of the photo is blending in a bit too much, but it's there. I used it. Um, and I'm going to point out that story of being able to see the plants under the water as part of my journaling. So hopefully those arrows will kind of click as people are reading journaling. I don't know. It, it's not super effective, but you know, sometimes we try things and they don't work out. Um, despite the little sparkles being X's, I kind of like that. So we'll see where that idea leads to in the future. I don't know. So I am trying to carefully save all of this spilled glitter and I don't know why because I don't plan on using this maybe ever <laughs> again. But there, there we go. My, um, side that wants to conserve products tried to clean that up and I just made a bigger mess doing it. So I had to shut off the camera, clean up everything, throw away whatever glitter was left over before I could move on to this step, which is to tie those colors from our glittery project into the entirety of the project. And I'm going to do that via stenciling. Since the title of this, oh, before I get to the title, um, this was tissue paper that was just sitting on my desk. Um, it came in a crafty box. And so I'm going to put it to you since it was sitting there. And I like adding in another color that's not just red and blue, which gets too patriotic for me. All right. If you've never worked with tissue paper before, you can do some fun things with it. What I like to do the most is to wet a paintbrush and then just draw a stripe on there. And that softens the tissue paper enough to tear it apart very easily. It's like butter to tear this stuff apart and you get this really soft feathery edge. So I really like that. And what I'm doing now is trying to measure out where I want to put the rest of my lines because I wanted to make this a certain size and I am going to set that aside to dry, which is why I took a pause from explaining the title thing. Now I am going to do two of these because I wanted to layer these behind my photo. So a smaller one and a larger one, but you'll see that went a little wrong too, but we'll get to that as well. All right, I am pulling out colors from my ink supply, and these are all Concord and Ninth colors, and I'm going to use the red, the dark blue, and then that uh, tissue paper uh, greeny color, and then another light blue that goes with the door embellishment piece. And I'm going to put all of these colors together with the stenciling, and so that is going to tame out the dark red and dark blue for me in terms of it reading too much like 4th of July. All right, I am going to try and keep this stenciling pretty light. I do have uh, my stencil brushes here. You'll notice that I kind of uh, spray my cloth and kind of rub them out a little bit before I start using them, just because I have one brush for all my teals, and I don't know what color was left behind on that brush last time I used it. So I will just wipe it down really quick, just so I can get a more true color with the new color that I'm using. Now with the red, I am sure to be really light handed with this because again, I don't want it screaming a 4th of July. I just want a hint of color there. 
I am fading out that color kind of top and bottom of these stripes, which brings me back to that title, which is leave the road behind and follow the trails, something like that. So on the left side of the stenciling, I have got a more formal grid. It's a brick pattern for my stenciling, which is going to represent the road or the very structured part of society. And then you'll see as we get to it, the other side of my stenciling will be more of that organic trail feel. So before I did that light blue color, I did again clean my brush. And as I move on to the dark blue, I don't need to clean my brush again because the dark color will just lay over the top of the light color and it won't be an issue. So I put the heaviest colors in this middle zone and I will realign my stencil so that I can really fade these off to the top and the bottom of the page. And it's so light that it's not really showing up on camera. I had a hard time photographing it when I was doing the project photos, but it is there. You can see it in person. All right, <laughs> I am back with that tissue paper and I realized I cut my layers down to mat a four by six photo but I had printed my photo at five by seven. So these mats are no longer the correct size. I am taking that smaller mat and just offsetting it so that up in that corner, it will look like there's double matting and I'm gonna hide a lot of the stuff on the other areas of the photo with embellishments. So it won't be as noticeable that those mats didn't go all the way around. And it's a de design style anyway. Mats do not have to go all the way around all your edges all the time. So. I'm just making it work and bringing that in. So I've gotten to the stenciling on the other side. I did have to put those layers in place to kind of see where I needed my stenciling to go. Now this stencil is definitely more organic feeling, but if I were to stencil over the same spot over and over again, it would look very structured. So here I am showing you that I will even rotate the stencil. I will use different parts of the stencil and try and get different zones of that stencil on there so it doesn't look like a rigid repetition. If you see the, the top two um, look much more similar than the other two stenciling sections that I do as I show you that zone. All right, so that is my stenciling done and in place and I did keep it nice and light to tone down those colors and I'm very happy with how everything is pulling together. All right, my title's gonna go at the top and be one of the three points of my focal triangle keeping the rest of the layout pretty simple just going to do a little bit of embellishing and then plenty of space for journaling which is why i moved my photo up a little bit more and that will all be the bones of this layout i do have one more idea for you um, and that's when i was working with that tissue paper you may have seen that there were some scraps left over and i'm going to do a technique with those it, before i get to that i do want to make sure all of this is adhered down i'm making sure that the Tissue paper is glued down well enough that it will hold the photo in place can be a little tricky because the tissue tends to absorb the glue really quickly and it did indeed absorb down to the bottom layer of tissue and the background. So I had to go in there and add a little bit more glue here and there. I am going to pop up some of this chipboard on foam to give it even more dimension, especially where I'm trying to create clusters um, with these elements and kind of overlap them some so that it all looks cohesive. All right, so I get that piece in place and I have got a little, a few blocks there set <laughs> where they don't overlap the stickles because that actually didn't dry yet. My photo glitter is dry already, but the stickles are still wet, which is, I think is another reason why I didn't like working with them too much. All right, here are those scraps of tissue paper and I am gonna create these little ruffled flowers. And here I am just doing a dry run of it just to see if it's gonna come out how I want it to. Um, you never know with the different pieces of paper you have. And I have done this kind of technique in the past. In fact, I have a very similar project using crepe paper, like crepe paper streamers from the decoration department. So I will link you up to that video in case you're curious about other techniques using these inexpensive reusable items. So once I have that dry fit done, I will go ahead and add a couple of dabs of glue, do a couple wrinkles, and then keep working that way, dabs of glue, including wrinkles, until I've got two layers in this one. But you could do one or three or however many layers you have in your scrap paper. Now to get these to look more like flowers, since they're, they are kind of messy looking, I will add more stickles to the center of these, despite it being red and the petals being green, adding these little polka dots kind of helps the mind see it more as a flower. And I like bringing in some more of that red to the layout since it was one of my mystery ingredients. I want to make sure that I'm not 
like just trying to hide it or ignore it. I do want to put it to use, um, even though it scared me. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan of red in general and red glitter and then the dark red with, uh, combined with the blue. So yeah, I was a little scared. <laughs> But I feel like I'm getting everything to pull together. Definitely adding that greener color to it helps um, tone down the fact that it is such a rich red and such a dark blue on all of these things. So I am happy with how things are coming out. My flowers are all done. I've got them glued in place. I will go ahead and add my journaling <laughs> for a moment there. I did think I wanted to use that little tiny scrap to do another flower, but I said, let it go. I've got enough. It's okay to leave it simple and move on from there. So that really does wrap up the project for this time. I did add a little bit more words and black writing around other areas of the layout just to kind of help pull it all together just a little bit more. And then I will leave you with a few close-ups of this uh, layout. And I hope you had a good time following me along with this kind of wild, wacky project that I do. And if you did, drop me a comment. Let me know what you liked about it. And I hope you will come back in the future for more projects. So until next time, I hope you have an artful day.